Uh, Mahmood, uh, obviously a very professional performance today, um, but you really put the foot on the accelerator, um, you know, clearly wanting to get as big a win as possible tonight. Yeah, um, guys just played well. That was the goal, and um, they achieved it. So, I mean, every single person that played in the game played exceptionally well, so I'm proud of them. What was the message, though, going into the game? Was it to really put the, keep the foot on the accelerator, or was it just a win? Yeah, just to, you know, just to play. We haven't been playing well. We just wanted, um, obviously, to win, and then we weren't worried about any of the point differential because, I mean, obviously, this is a team that beat us twice. <laughs> so we were just talking about just winning the game first. Um, and then I told the team when it gets to the fourth quarter, based on the score, then we'll start talking about that. Um, but they, they understood. I mean, they, they read the news. They know where we're at. They know the positioning. They know how the tiebreakers work. So, um, but they were ready from the start. How much uh, confidence uh, can you take into the, um, into the playoffs now after a win like that? A lot. Obviously, I mean, we got the most championship experience than anybody in the league um, in the locker room. So I think that will help us as well. So you really needed that win then um, to, you know, I suppose, build that momentum uh, after a couple of losses? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, if we didn't win that game, we wouldn't be in. So we needed the win for multiple reasons. But yeah. Uh, Jalen's impact uh, early was uh, you know, really impressive. Um, he's seen like Adams or Galloway? Uh, sorry, yeah, Adams. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he's, he's seen like a man on a mission early. Yep. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, like I said, he's one of the guys that's uh, been part of the back to back championships. He's uh, won, you know, the first one. and. He's been locked in uh, for the last couple of weeks. And like I said, I mean, we've just been up and down. We've been struggling. Uh, guys been injured coming back. And it's just good to get a win. Um, like I said, to finish the season off. And I think any of the six teams that are in the playing, uh, in the playoffs, uh, have an opportunity to win it all. And you obviously, uh, your depth um, today uh, shone through, obviously, against them who you know, got their injury uh, issues. But was it important uh, you know, to get guys like uh, Jalen and DJ uh, really uh, you know, clicking? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, guys played well. Um, you know, I just want to see different lineups. I'm going to change the lineup for the first game based on who we play as well and just kind of go from there. The, the, the starting unit tonight, different as you, as you just said, was that really just about experimenting with some different combinations or was that based purely on the matchup tonight? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a combination of both, uh, to be honest. I just wanted to, you know, Jonah's been playing well for us. Um, and matchup wise, I thought Jordy's done a great job, and he did the same exact things that he's been doing for us uh, defensively off the bench tonight. So he's done some good things. Uh, two, he's been you know consistent throughout the season. Um, I mean, his growth has been phenomenal. So, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a, a mixture of uh, combinations, rotations for us. And uh, I'll go back, and uh, there's going to be one or two adjustments or changes that I make. Um, once again, who we play, Illawarra, New Zealand, um, and kind of go from there. DJ, I thought, played great, one of the best games he's had for a while now. Um, obviously, he needed to get some, some rhythm back, and it's probably a good sign heading into the postseason for you to see him play like that. How do you like him as an as a option off the bench longer term? Good. Um, you know, that's one thing i got to decide, you know, if he's coming off the bench or if he's going to start uh, for us. So we'll see. Um, I've uh, had multiple different starting lineups. Um, you know, I've changed them uh, due to injuries and different various reasons. Um, but obviously he's he's talented. That's why CP and ownership signed him um, from last year, the season they had with Cans. And once again, hopefully he continues to build. But we keep we play like this. We're gonna be t we're gonna be a tough out. Uh, Angus Glover didn't play tonight. Was there any reason behind that? Yeah, no, it was just you know part of the rotations. Uh, just my thought process of going in uh, the groups that I wanted to see. So, um, but it's nothing moving forward that he's not gonna play. Um, as you guys have seen, I, I will mix it up and. Uh, just try to put the best group out there. Alex, what's the feeling amongst the group now that you've got that win? You know you're in the play-in. When you finish fifth and sixth, you'll find out tomorrow. But obviously a, a pressure one coming in knowing you had to get this one today. Yeah, it's good. I think the whole week we obviously knew that it was win or go home with the results that happened prior. So I think everyone was just super determined, super focused, and kind of felt that energy from the start of the game and managed to continue it for 40 minutes. And you personally, it, it, it's been a, a strong first season in the league, obviously. You know, you, you did really well early on. And, mm. um, you know, your, your play has probably been a bit less consistent than maybe you'd liked of late, but today was a really strong showing on both ends of the floor. So how, how much confidence does that give you going into this play in now? Yeah, it feels good. Obviously, now is the time you want to be playing well um, when everything's on the line. So feeling good with that. And everyone was able to help me. Coach was confident in my abilities. And everyone was able to find me today. So it felt good. How much are you going to be cheering for uh, Adelaide tomorrow? Yeah, obviously, whoever we've got to play, we're going to play him. But I guess the higher we'd finish, the, the better.
Fred, can you talk a little bit about Alex and you know, the e-book applies in all these years in terms of maturity and understanding of the game? I'm just interested to see what you see behind closed doors about you know, his attitude and, and his ability. Yeah, just that. You know, just being around the NBA and G League for the last uh, seven years, um, I mean, he belongs, obviously, and he would, um, I think, excel um, at that level. Um, I'm not sure, you know, any of the other next stars or guys I've – obviously, I have no guys that have come through here, but just the group this season. Um, his basketball IQ and you guys say, I'll play him one through five, and he's bringing the ball up the floor. He's, he's the guy screening and rolling. He's the guy spacing. For a guy to be able to do that on the fly, the basketball IQ is second to none. Um, and I would love to find out just, you know, guys that are going to be getting to the next level that has the IQ that he does. Um, and it goes just with his work ethic um, that he puts in uh, film-wise. Um, you know, we put practice film on huddle and do all that stuff, and he watches it. Uh, he watches every single game, and he's just a student in the game. So it's I promise it's nothing from me. It's just... Uh, he's gotten the opportunity because he deserves it, um, and he's earned every single thing that he's gotten. So kudos to him. Uh, his parents have—they've raised a phenomenal person. He's fun to coach. So I'm—I'm um, I'm just glad that he's on the team. What about for yourself? I mean, you've had a bit of a tough initiation in your first year with how the guys are going. You know, how have you dealt with that? And and I guess you know your expectations and having the win today, and now you're in the playing. Do you have a personal feeling of okay? I, you know, I'm going to show you guys what, what I can do and what we can do now. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, truly, I honestly, I, I like to put things into perspective. Um, basketball is obviously as important as can be in my life, but there are other things that are as important as well. Um, you know, and I put forth my best effort to try to be the best coach that I can and try to make sure that these guys are successful. But wins and losses, I try not to let that affect who I am um, any day of the week. Um, you know, I'm going to put the time forth to try to be as successful as possible. But like I said, I mean, I think we're as talented as can be. Um, you know, now obviously we have to win a couple games more to get where we want to get. But it's all part of the process. So um, it's been fun. It's truly been fun. I'm glad we're part of the final six. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens from here. Alex, can you just talk a little bit about, I guess, your first year as a pro? I mean, you know, what, sort of watched you go through the, the junior system and play, your, you know, Make playing for the Boomers and your junior national stuff. How have you found like playing in Sydney your first year? What surprised you? Yeah, it's obviously been a lot of fun. Um, the group was super welcoming from the start, and when I was training with them a little bit before I actually joined the team, it was just as welcoming. And they just one of the best for me. If I decided to to go to the Kings or go to a different team in the NBL or go to college, they just wanted what's best for me. So that was definitely a good thing to see from the start. And then just being around the guys, everyone just wants to tr help the team win. There's no no egos. Everyone's just trying to do what they can to help the team win. And that's something that I really take take on board. And seeing that in the Boomers, but seeing that carry over to the NBL and see how how much that just is a goal from everyone. I think that's something that's super cool to see. Yeah, obviously you kind of started the season well, had a bit of a, a drop off and I feel like that's a part of it. Um, everyone's going to go through their ups and downs, but it's about how you respond. So I think that's something that just keep being consistent, keep trusting the work and just having everyone's support in the organisation just made me realise that I can do this and eventually it's going to come and it came tonight, which felt very good. And I'm sure you're not going to let the cat out of the bag, mate, but, uh, you know, I guess there's some discussions to be had pretty soon about what the next step is for you. Are you excited about that? And can you just give us a bit of an insight into your thought process? Yeah, it's obviously exciting. Everyone's trying to look into the future but stay in the present at the same time. So I think just take a day at a time and see what happens at the end of the season, what people are saying, what the feedback is. So just look to then, but at the moment, just stay in the present. And just so you guys all know, so just for him, for a young man like him, so don't determine success just on the offensive end of the floor. You know what I mean? He's he's as young as can be in the way that he handles things. So, and that's one thing that I've been telling him, don't let your, your shot making dictate your, that's not success. He still plays hard on the other end of the floor. He's been our best, re, uh, one of our best rebounders, one of our best crashers. So for a guy at his age to be able to do those things, and when your shot's not falling, still play the other end of the floor, 
I mean, that's a guy that's been a 12, 15-year vet type mentality. So he has a bright future ahead of him. God bless. God bless. I just told 15 new vets that don't do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you guys. Yep, thank you guys. Yeah, good luck.